Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornbill podcast, uh, featuring Hornbill, uh, starring Hornbill. Uh, <laughs> I am Bob, um, and with me today for the very first episode, a very special um, guest, a very talented and uh, incredible um, musical and just overall wonderful individual, um, Brayden, you may know him as St. Judas. What's up, dude? Hey, what's going on? I wasn't expecting all those compliments right there. <laughs> Feeling good right now, okay. Yeah, dude. That's uh, what we're doing here, and I already fucked up, so sick. Um, but we can keep going with it. Not a big deal. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Warts and all, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Warts and all. Dude, warts are gross. They kind of are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, um, shit, I had warts on my fingers when I was a kid, and I remember they just kept coming back and coming back until I went to a doctor, and they had to, like, get acid and shit in there and, like, mess oh, with it. Dude, I mean, that's, that's so, fucked up. I think, I've had, I've had some warts in, as, a, as a kid on, like, my hands, like, right here, you know, and shit, so it's not fun. I don't like it. They eventually went away, but... I get. I feel your pain. I feel it. Do you wearing a Minnie Mouse it's a hoodie right now, or not a hoodie? It's but a sweater. Yeah, it's a mini. It's a Minnie Mouse sweater. It's Dude, my I comfort it. sweater that I wear like around, just around to feel warm. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. It's my favorite. I like it. My sister has a matching one. That's like a Donald Duck one. We got them when we read Disney together. So Sick. I don't know. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. You are in Florida, right? I currently live in Florida. It is it is my pain, it is my cross to bear. <laughs> and you just got back from what'd you say, Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, spent some time in Fort Lauderdale, which is super fun. Went to St. Augustine. Uh, checked out the lighthouse there. It's a very spooky place. I'm a big fan of. If you can't tell from my uh, my my aesthetic through my music, like I like spooky things and haunted. I don't know. I'm a big fan. So it's, I... it's like the oldest. City in America, or the right? I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I thought that was like so. Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, I don't know what the details are. I'm sure, like maybe. Um, or that's where that they hunted witches or, or something. Yeah, Plymouth Rock is like Plymouth Rock. Plymouth, yeah, yeah, it was like the oldest settlement. I don't know. There, it's. I think it. I don't know the details, but it's like the oldest like city in America. So oh. like the Spanish. I, I'm probably I'm no history buff right now, and I'm making a fool of myself. But something about it being like the oldest thing related to cities, and there's like old things there, and it's super haunted. And there's ghosts. Out. I have no idea. I probably should have paid more attention on the tour. <laughs> Dude, I, I I could care less about haunted stuff, but I am a sucker for lighthouses. Like lighthouses are my jam i grew up on long island and like the jones beach oh, lighthouse is like yeah. ingrained in my head and that's like i don't know and then we we go to outer banks every year and uh yeah, hell yeah dude i love outer banks the uh I the, ki the kitty hawk there. is around there yeah. and um they've got like tons of lighthouses i i've been to so many of the lighthouses in uh the carolinas so i yeah. feel that it's good stuff we typically stay up in what Kerala, and that Kerala okay. lighthouse is awesome too. So hell yeah, dude, that's awesome. That's cool. Small world. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, talk to me musically. Um, Sidewalks EP, uh, songs okay. for Dorian EP. Who yeah. is Dorian? Dorian. Okay, so Dorian. Who is Dorian? <laughs> <laughs> Dorian is the um was the name of the hurricane that hit uh, yes okay the East Coast um like two years ago twenty like seventeen twenty it was the summer of twenty seventeen I'm pretty sh no wrong that is wrong double really two wrong. Years summer ago. of twenty twenty nineteen oh twenty but, okay I know, so it it's is like twenty twenty one right now so. <laughs> yeah it was the name of the hurricane that hit here when I moved down here and um, I don't know like the whole EP is about like change and uh like it, it felt like a lot of things in my life were like building up this like big storm so it just kind of felt really uh natural to 
to call it songs for Dorian because okay. uh, that that hurricane was like a physical manifestation of like all of the anxiety that I I had about like moving and shit. So um, I don't know. It just felt it just felt right, you know. So where did you move to Florida from? I moved from Nashville, so Nashville. hell yeah, Music City. Um, it was fun there, and all my uh, all my friends are there, and um, they're not in Florida, and that's cool, <laughs> not cool. But um, I moved from Nashville. I was working there as an actor, um, and I got a job in Florida, which was pretty cool. And I decided that um, I didn't want to risk being homeless, so I <laughs> I took this job and I moved to Florida and. Uh, and I'm not I'm not currently homeless, so I guess that's a good thing. That's a good adversion to risk. I, uh, that's a, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when you say actor, um, film actor, theater actor, um, are theater, there other kinds mostly of theater. Okay. There are other. I mean, there's voiceover actors, there's commercial oh, yeah. actors, okay. there's um, student actors. But yeah, it was a, it was mostly theater. Like I got a lot of my job doing like performances on stage and shit and i got to do a lot of cool shows and but they don't they don't pay very well you know like so i, I, I worked a lot and uh you know i just I just it's a thing but i do love i do love acting it's very fun to do it's very very nice um but completely unrelated to i guess it's not unrelated to music i did some musicals which unrelated. thank god that there aren't like recordings of those performances because the last <laughs> thing i need is for like videos of me doing fucking grease lightning or something like that like whatever. so you did full like on musicals it. not just oh yeah theater okay you, musicals pay my dude like in theater if you want to like make money as a stage actor you do musicals there's not a lot of work in just regular stage acting unfortunately which is like my passion yeah um so I did a lot of musicals to, to, for the paychecks, you know. I did Grease, and it was it was Grease. Like it's a, it's a show, I guess. <laughs> so. Dude, I, I'm so uh, I I am very uncultured, and I know nothing about theater and um, I, I mean movies even too. Uh, yeah. uh, I get made fun of all the time because I haven't seen like freaking Forrest Gump and I've never seen Grease like um, oh, it's fine. You're it not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just, I, I don't have the attention span and I, I can't emotionally give myself to things like that and um, Grease just seems like a lot and <laughs> it's, it's, I just... it's a lot it, there's, it's very problematic They're, like we can I'm not. I'll save you my tirade about Grease but like I, I do not like Grease with passion and the fact that I did it is like the most ironic thing to me. Um, like, I, but I, I, I'm all for cool bad. jackets and slick back hair and like, yeah, um, I don't know, like lot. '50s diners and hot rods and shit or whatever. I'm assuming that's what Greece is about. It <laughs> is. I mean, kind of. It's it's kind of that way. I don't know. Like, it, I did it more for like the the work, obviously. And I mean, when it comes to stage shows, like, I, I don't really care. Like what i'm doing as long as i'm like performing because i just really love to perform uh it's just like a different avenue of being able to perform um but it definitely like will get draining sometimes to like do shows like that where you're mm. not like it's it's not quite the same like running around thinking about summer love and all that shit like, you, <laughs> performing um theater wise is it more is it more or less encompassing as a whole um physically mentally emotionally uh than music or would you say it's the same it's different it's different and that's actually one of the reasons why like i started making music um or i started focusing more on making music um i mean physically yes it's very taxing and you know performing music is, is a physically taxing thing when you're doing shows and stuff um but it, as far as the other things go it's a different kind of like battle i guess if you want to call it that like it like it does it does tax you emotionally but it, it's for different reasons just because there's a lot of stress and making sure things like things go well um but it's it's super nice to be able to like get on stage and um only thing you're worried about is like making sure you perform the show i mean you think if you can think of like doing a show music wise like making sure you do everything correctly it's just the difference is 
you're performing something that has already been written and that people like That's true. know what they're expecting as far as like performing your own music and stuff like that you know it, it's different and another thing is that you get to kind of like become a different person when you're doing theater i mean to an extent you do that with music right and some mm -hmm. people do it more so than others um i know it's not as normal with you know like the emo scene because uh emo musicians tend to be more vulnerable and like themselves which is something that i really like um but with with like stage and theater you just kind of get to disappear into like someone new and i've i've gotten to play like a ton of cool characters that i never like i've played a, a murderer before i've played fucking uh 50s uh greaser leather jacket which is like not me at all like i had to be like this macho guy and if you know me like i'm not macho at all <laughs> so i had to be like way more confident in myself than i like ever am so it's it's fun you know it's very fun it's very therapeutic in the sense of being able to do something like that um but people do it for different reasons that, that's why i like to do it um some people like the, the lights and the stage and the attention and you know, I, I think there's a lot of similarities between music and theater. It's, it's a form of art, it's a form of performance, it's a form of expressing yourself. They're just a little different, um, mm -hmm. and in a lot of ways, they're more dif they're more similar to each other than like movies and stage acting is because movies are a lot different than being on stage. So when you're performing music, totally like you're on stage and you're doing your thing, and it's super cool. So I don't know, it's fun, you know. <laughs> I get it. So does naming uh, i guess uh, i don't even know are are you saint judas or is the the product uh, the, the the product saint judas you know i bounce back and forth with that sometimes like i i've always kind of considered the saint judas thing as a, as a project that i work on although because of the nature of the um of the name itself it always feels like and since i'm i'm mostly solo like i I usually do most things on my own with help from others. Um, it, it feels like the St. Judas is like me, but I've always referred to it as, as a project that I work on okay. um, or a band that I'm I in. wasn't sure if that tied into the, the whole, I, I don't even know if it's a particular type of mindset, but the, the theater aspect of it and kind of not being you, but performing as somebody else. So yeah, no, I feel that like it's actually like a big thing with me and making music like um, like exactly that, but like on the opposite side of it to where like, you know, you, you, you I have the project I have the name and, and becoming like the character of St. Judas, but like it just so happens to be like the, the character that I want to portray is like myself, like a, a, a version of me that I feel like I don't get to be expressive enough with. Um, in public or with like other people would you say um, it's an exaggerated version of yourself or just you oh, yeah. that you typically don't portray it's i i mean there there could be some exaggeration i mean i wouldn't say exaggerations I, I definitely hyperbolize sometimes you know or like maybe like something is really like hounding on me or like getting to me and like i have these feelings or these emotions and like I double down on them and I kind of uh, take it and I turn it up to 11. I think therapy is like a really good uh, <laughs> example of that. Like okay. I'm very like cringe. I kind of cringe at that song now because it's like, it's so angry and it's such a like mean breakup song. And like, that's not how I feel at all now, but it was like, it was a specific emotion that I felt in that moment. And I, I know, you know, that as like a musician, like you feel something and you just have to like, it like explodes and you have to write about it. And it doesn't necessarily reflect like how you really feel, but maybe like just in that moment, like you wanted to express this emotion that you have and oh, absolutely. Um, you can kind of like go balls to the wall with it. so to speak. <laughs> I mean, that's, so, that's, that's music as a whole though, right? It's yeah. um, it, it doesn't, come or it doesn't go anywhere without that initial emotion in that yeah. initial moment so um yeah i mean shit i you think kid rock is ball with the bowling now like that's yeah. <laughs> that's not the case he was ball with the bowling then and now he's what he's freaking singing with uh 
I don't know, some other racist scumbags who... I feel that, yeah. No, I, I don't know. It's 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 interesting. Like, the the project is always, like, evolving to me. Like, it, it's very much a reflection of, of me as a person. Um, just the specific things that I don't necessarily feel like I get to express um, most of the time, you know? Especially around the people that I'm around. Not a lot of... I'm not, like... It's funny, like, I haven't really been into the, the music scene or, like, this kind of scene until, like, COVID happened, and I got mm-hmm. really, really involved in it, because it was really nice to be around people that, like, felt the same way that I do about things, and I sure. felt like I could really express myself the way that I feel like I never get to um, in any other way. So it, it uh, as, as much as I cringe at, at the therapy song, it, like, this entire thing has very has been very therapeutic me as a way to like be able to be myself you know and not have to worry about what other people think yeah you know so cool i totally understand um i I mean i know you know but for anybody out there saint judas the project is very special to me too um because i've been uh grateful enough to work on some of this stuff um, and the latest single, Bioluminescent Blood Ritual, which if you haven't heard, you got to fucking listen to it because it's sick. Um, I got to be a big part in, of the production in that. And um, to, I don't know, to kind of get your process uh, and understand how your brain works and ticks musically and from a, a, a musically structural sound point, uh, uh, viewpoint, that was super cool to me and getting to work with that and um i don't know if anybody knows or cares but there may or may not be stuff that there uh, more there stuff will <laughs> there will be more stuff it, <laughs> life is life has got me right now by the back of my neck so like i'm trying so hard but no you it, it, I'm, I'm super glad to hear you say that because like I feel like the way that I, my process for making music is like the wrong way to do it. <laughs> Cause I Dude. don't have like any training in music at all. Like everything I do, I, I taught myself. So Dude, same. like, I'm just figuring it out and I'm doing the things that work for me. And I've explained to some of my friends who, like the guy that helped me produce some um, sidewalks, uh, I was showing him like kind of how I do things. And he was like, what the fuck are you doing to like, this is so <laughs> weird. How you like make music? I don't, Dude, so I don't know. Like this is this I, work. I, that makes me respect it even more because I resonate with I so deeply with that because I I taught myself completely. Um, I don't know uh, musical verbiage. I don't know technical terms. I don't know no. things. Um, and uh, just recent past trying to you know, whether. Uh, potentially teaching new musicians some hornbill things and not having yeah. any fucking clue what I'm talking about and trying to explain some complexities that exist in our music and then mm. learning um, Derek's music who Derek Christensen uh, I'm uh, hornbill is part of his live band and l- trying to learn things and uh, dude I'm so pumped he's the I know best. I can tell um, it's awesome I'm excited for you man um but learning, I, 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 I can learn things, but when things are, I guess, explained to me, uh, rather, rather than shown to me, I don't know what the fuck anybody's talking about, and like, I don't know. So, I resonate no, with I, that. Um, I feel you on that. No, you're fine. <laughs> and don't think that you make music incorrectly. There is no incorrect way to make music, even if your process might be a little weird everybody has their own process and as long as you end up with a product right then yeah i think you're doing it right so that's that's how i feel i always i always say like if i, I never want to put out any music that like i wouldn't just like listen to myself you know so if, yeah. if i'm listening back to a song and i go i like this a lot like i go you know what it's worth it you know so yeah no especially with um i'm noticing a lot of attention to uh, to detail with things in music that don't necessarily mean a lot to music as a whole. Um, no. Mainly uh, structure and uh, genre confinement and um, yeah. uh, 
just the 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 shooting for something that isn't necessarily coming from your heart and yeah i i don't know that 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 does not make sense to me um and because like if it if it's not i don't know it shouldn't be taking you a long time to write something because you're trying to make it sound like something else like if it's taking you a while it should be because your creative limitations are are limiting you from doing that or something along those lines but that's um, no that's exactly how i feel dude that's that was one of the big things i learned with this this recent project was like te- like learning that you know just because i can't do something doesn't mean that i it's not possible like being able to uh, what am i trying to say like being able to trust other people and into like the work that i want to create you know so like i I very much wanted these new songs to be like i put i did everything for dorian like the last dp i put out that all of it was me and i was like super proud of it it's not like well made at all but for like me i've come over like listening to my first dp that's not on spotify and not taking it off of everything else like Going from that to which I did all of that for to Dorian like was such a huge jump for me and I was so proud of it and I thought to myself okay I want to push myself even more and I felt like I kept hitting this wall you know of like my own ability as a creator and what I know currently I like I struggled with um, letting other people help me because I felt like you know it's DIY do it yourself I like I have to do it like it has to be me and it just learning to like learn from other people has been such a great process see that's so cool one to hear and the fact that you're saying do it yourself as do it yourself and not DIY as a genre DIY yeah, yeah. Um, that I don't know it's cool because like I, it, genre confinement is crazy right now and yeah it is just I, I i guess i guess it's always been that way but i don't know just do do what you want to listen to do what sounds right to you um i, I just I don't know. no i get you, no, I get I, you. i'm a stickler and for that no i i feel that i i the genre thing has been something that i have certainly tried to like reassure myself about because like i am just now starting to feel like i'm comfortable with how i sound and how i sound isn't necessarily what i feel like a lot of people like to listen to it's very like kind of an amalgamation of all the different things that i, Dude, you, I kind of enjoy you're all over the place and yeah, like that's, sometimes yeah. that's i mean you're sure. you're in this this folk indie uh, acoustic realm for the most part, but you're you're bringing in parts, uh, some countryish parts. You're bringing in more folky parts. You're bringing in some poppy parts. You're bringing in all this random shit, and it it's it, it, like you said, it's an amalgamation of just everything that's in your head, right? And yeah. it sounds good to you, and that's I I, I care more and feel that music more than i feel somebody trying to be the next uh freaking paramore and uh, having something that sounds just like paramore or yeah um, you know what i'm saying um no i know what you mean people trying to be the next big thing and yeah. i like that's that's never been something i've been concerned about like i just i make music because it helps me one and because i i enjoy making it and i enjoy listening to it like i listen to my own music i think that the whole stigma of like listening to your own i don't know if that's actually a stigma but i feel like everybody kind of deals with that uh i feel that sometimes i'm just like so i don't know like i still have trouble like listening to my own songs with like other people they'll be like i'm gonna put your song on i'm like you don't you don't have to do that that i can't do that i can't do i don't need to listen to this while you're listening to it as well like when i'm alone in my car and thinking to myself like I'm I'm not fine, but we don't we don't have to do this. It's okay. <laughs> Funny tangent from that. Um, so uh, Ryan, the other half of Hornbill, he just recently moved yeah. out to Salt Lake with me, and um, yeah. uh, in April I flew out to him to help him pack up and move out. And uh, the night before we left, his family threw him a going away party. It was awesome. And Aww. his family was just like, "Oh yeah, let's listen to Hornbill," and <laughs> oh no. The it, it's a very weird environment listening to 
or I guess having this whole group of people that you just met listen to me pretty much put my whole life out there like in yeah. these songs and just like dealing with crippling depression <laughs> and yeah. like these people are like oh this sounds so good and I'm like thanks Thank you. <laughs> like, I, just... I, I feel it so much dude I, I, <laughs> I'm like the opposite of the kind of person that's like always constantly talking about their music like if some like a co-worker finds out that I make music and they're like well I want to hear your song I'm like it's, it's really okay you don't need to you don't need to hear about how depressed I am. It's, it's really fine. I'm, I'm happy to share whatever. Is, so, uh, same, uh, similar situation. Coworker says, hey, I want to listen to Hornbill. I heard you play in this band. Be like, yeah, sure, here, listen to it. Um, but I'm not going to be around for it. <laughs> like, no, yeah, that, that's, that's what I mean. Like, they're like, pull it up. Like, let's listen to it right now. I go, no, 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 no. no, no. Like, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> it's okay, I promise. Yeah, I, no, I don't that, know. I've. I, I'm weird about that, so I probably shouldn't be. Like, I'm trying better to be more like confident in myself and in in my music, especially since it's like it's been a weird year. You know, the fact that like people seem Has to it? actually, yeah. I'm, I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> other than the fact that it's been a weird year for everybody, for me, it's been strange because like I never thought I'd make music that other people and en would enjoy. You know, and and it seems to me that like. Some people are in, are enjoying it, and it's very there are strange out there to like. Enjoying it. I know, and it's it's weird to me. Like I've never encountered I, that before. I completely so. understand. And so, like people telling me that they enjoy a song, or like they've been listening to it, or they fucking like they know the lyrics to my songs, and I'm just like, whoa, what is happening? This is crazy. And I'm trying to be more like not weird and more confident about like myself and the fact that like i should be i should be proud of like what i make and what i create Good for you. so you know it's been a it's been a weird year for me and i I'm, think that's I'm working the, on it i think that's the artist's struggle um yeah. it doesn't matter what form of art you're in trying to be confident in what you have to present to the world um whether that i mean assuming that's your choice to present it to the world some people do yeah, it for the hell of doing it and keep it to themselves mm -hmm. and that's cool too so yeah um yeah so um you just played this good noise fast um hell that yeah. was nuts uh they finger fast that? the, the <laughs> that's the second or third time they've done that right uh um i I, they're gonna if they listen to this they're gonna kill me for not knowing um like i think it's their third fest it might be their fourth i know it's not the second because there was one before i think it's the, the third, first then. the first one i played so um i have a blast doing them honestly like they're so much fun and they're so like nerve-wracking to do for me so yeah. dude i want to know so i'm gonna pull this up in the thing you might not see it but um i want to know where you recorded this because you're seemingly in the back room of <laughs> some industrial thing you have ladders in there and it's a very acoustically sound room it's great i love that room um so i i'm not going to go into details about this i'm only mentioning it because you asked about what the room is but i work on a uh, i currently work on a, a kid show okay um and that is one of the um the back studios that they use for the for the show so i asked them if i could use one of the empty studios to record um some music stuff and they were like i guess <laughs> so i Sick. literally like cleared the studio out i set up they have like lighting equipment and shit i set up the lighting the lights and my little thing and i just spent like way too long recording way too many takes of all the that stuff it was it was super fun to be in like an actual like quote-unquote studio room instead yeah. of just like a room you know like a bedroom or whatever so it was a ton of fun i, I it's like i love the aesthetic too like you said the people pointed out and they're like what's with the fucking ladders man like wh where Dude, are it's, you it's, like it's super cool the I and then you, it, so I, I so I'm having. Uh, where are you here? Uh, I don't know what song you're playing off the top of my head, but uh, you have Big Al playing in the corner, and that's super sick too. Um, yeah. Shout out yeah. to Big Al. Um, 100. percent But yeah, this it's such a cool aesthetic, like you said. It's just you freaking jamming in this little room, and it looks like I don't know. It looks like you just broke into like the back of like a cell phone store and like just started <laughs> playing. It's like. 
that's the most punk rock thing I'd ever do. Like, Dude, just, it's super cool. I gotta play a set, just break you get in a ring, and play it here. <laughs> Yeah, dude, this per that. this performance was super cool. Big Al's performance was super cool. Every I mean, everybody it killed it. Um, it. Honestly, I always love Fingerfest. Like, and I'll continue calling it Fingerfest till the day I die. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it's always so much fun to do. It's such a big like thing for me because I I like I I get up and usually like I'm playing and they put they put me in the early slot. So like I'll I'll get in like early to watch myself or like the other homies that are playing and then I'll just stick around like all day to watch having it playing and, and shit and i wish i had people to do like watch parties for i've seen like a bunch of people on twitter that are like you know they have like a huge group of people and they have like a party to watch uh the fest at and i'm just like damn that looks like so much fun but uh it, it's always such a blast doing it and i i love it i meet so many great bands and people oh, yeah. at the fest like if you're active in the chat and you're like following the other bands that you like and you're like reaching out to them and saying like the the old the old timey show uh line you know six set dude like yeah dude, i've i've met so many great people through that way um and honestly like i love it and i i hope that i get to do it again i i hope that they do a a, a, a live version of it i want to dude, do a will. real a real i hope so it's just you know it's expensive to do well, shit like that Yes, uh, it is, um, but they're big enough now. Uh, one, I'm so proud of them for, uh, one, growing the way that they have since the beginning of oh, COVID. Yeah. Like, that's nuts. Um, it's insane. And uh, I, I would imagine that they've they've made some good friends and good resources to where that's something that could very easily happen, um, regardless of where it actually is. I. I, one of the first things I thought of um, when they did the either the first or the second Finger Fest, I'm gonna call it Finger Fest too. Finger it's just Fest, yeah. Um, uh, was uh, you know how they tour with like doing emo nights and like they play random shit like all over the country and it's like just the yeah. same like DJ set or whatever. But like I see them having a tour and pretty much gathering all these DIY bands from all over the country and just having a show in like different corners and I don't know like that was one of the first so things cool. that I thought of being super cool cuz the like the the reasoning behind this podcast and ultimately what they have done is to to bring all these DIY um indie musicians and talents together um and I don't know. I think they could do something really freaking cool with that, and yeah. I don't know, maybe have no. like one or two actual like touring bands go with it, and just I don't know. I think it'd be I, cool. I I'd play that shit in a heartbeat. I don't care where it is. I'd drive out, and I would even if I'm just like the t the, the noon acoustic opener <laughs> that nobody is even there for. Like I would be there. I would drive however Same. much i need to drive to play that shit so like Same. super exciting i love what they're doing for the community too like i feel like i've i've been accepted into this awesome community and, and a lot of it i feel like stems from uh i'm not to say that they are like the people that created the community but it does feel like they're a big part of it they're definitely they're very, a big like, component in it um yeah. i would say those guys uh the emo trash guys um, yeah they're they're I don't know. They they've built this platform to help others, and I don't know. They're just providing really good resources for a lot of people, whether they know it or not, um, mm -hmm. and actually connecting musicians that may or may not have uh, I don't know been in any type of public situation uh, outside of COVID. So I don't know. It's cool, and I love them for it um i hope they keep doing it uh oh yeah, yeah i don't see them stopping anytime soon i don't either but i hope they can continue <laughs> it for a while because yeah i mean I, i'm just thinking back to myself being this 15 year old depressed fat kid and like i that's <laughs> that's what i would have wanted i i yeah i i find myself um kind of being drawn into these bigger platforms that have these resources for younger folks and like i wish i had that shit that's cool i feel you on that one man i mean better late than never you know that's how i feel right now i go well i'm i'm not exactly uh young anymore i guess i don't know but like i'm glad that i've like been accepted into this like really awesome community so it's been yeah. great 
it's been awesome. Love it. They're awesome. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> Likewise. Uh, dude, so talk to me. Um, uh, what the hell was I just going to say? <laughs> um, anything musically coming out for you soon? Um, like or from plan, from, planned, from I me. should say. Uh, I do have some plans. Um, we'll see how those plans pan out. Uh, I have a, when you're a fully new... moved into your apartment and unboxed and oh, set up. Oh, don't, don't even. <laughs> oh, the apartment thing has gotten so. That's a whole other situation. Oh, um, dear Lord. But yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> Um, I am working on a new, uh, EP right now. It's pretty, pretty much, um, I mean, it's like, it's written, it's finished. It's very close to being finished. You, you know that cause you're helping me make it, uh, which has been like, am God I? Sent. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> if not, yeah. then, uh, I don't know what I'm going <laughs> to do about this last, this last, this last two songs. Um, but uh, they, I was hoping that they would come out at the end of this month. Um, but with like the life shit that has been happening, um, it's looking like that might not happen. So, uh, and again, like it, it's, I'm just reassuring myself, you know, like I'm not, I'm not giving myself any like deadlines and stuff because it's it's really about like putting out something that I'm proud of and like yeah. I would never put out. Like I could have, I originally wanted the CP to come out at the end of this past year, um, assuming that I did it all myself. And I quickly realized that like, I wasn't going to be able to do it all by myself. So, you know, I kind of accepted the fact that this will come out when it comes out. And it feels terrible because like, it's literally like five songs and it's taken me like over a year to like finish them. Here. And I'm seeing like Gami Gang put out a double LP and some other people are putting out like three LPs in the time that it takes me to put out like five songs. I'm thinking, well, here I, here I am <laughs> trying my best. Dude, everybody um, has their own, uh, procedures and operations and methods. And uh, yeah. especially in art, you can't compare yourself to others. Cause some people just work differently and some yeah. people work faster. Some people work slower. Like that's just part of it. And if there's, I, I if there's, that one thing i've learned um especially with this uh, i mean we're we're doing this second lp too and um can't wait the, can't the, wait <laughs> the the time that you take to step away from things and actually deal with life and stuff like that and just deal with other shit makes what you're working on better um i think so i agree i mean i didn't even expect i thought i would be writing my my debut lp right now um and then and then it uh it became this ep instead the quarantine it's it's my it's my quarantine project i guess if you want to call it that but like it's very much not about quarantine it's just shit that like i felt like i needed to focus on yeah. during that time and uh i quickly realized that like this is not the LP that I was wanting to write. So I just kind of took some time to create. I feel like that's all of my EPs is that like I'm, I'm trying to write my LP and then I end up writing things that I don't think fit thematically with what I'm trying to do on a longer release. So who it cares? becomes like an, I know, who cares? I, I'm itching to get, I'm always itching to get back to the LP though because like I keep writing for it like slowly and it's, it's slowly like coming together and it's just not. I don't know. It's it's it'll come when it comes. So Dude, unless you're writing like a very dedicated um like concept album, things don't have to things don't have to to mesh well as far as yeah. what the message is. Um That makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I I think it's cool when you have a full album full of just random maybe not random, but a full album of I don't know, just different songs that say different things um I, yeah it just lets you know what that particular person or group has gone through in the last however long it took them to write that album and i don't know yeah like, unless, unless you're going full concept i wouldn't worry yeah. about fitting into any type of molded message you know that makes sense i always write my um 
not necessarily concepts, but I always write my 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 releases as like a as a theme. Like I, there's always a theme to what I'm writing. Like there's right, a specific. The, if you're going for it, then. There's a. I mean, it's not necessarily like writing a like a full on storyline that like every song is like individually. Well, with this next release, it's kind of that way, but um, it's just five songs. But still, it's me kind of just like testing that. Um, but like I always like to write things about like a specific idea you know whether that with sidewalks um i had a specific idea with sidewalks with dorian i told you it, it had to do with like just this tumultuous building up of of these anxieties and yeah. you know, almost like a storm-like thing coming like it there's always like an idea behind what i write um so it i don't i don't know i've never i guess like my first ep was just kind of random songs that i threw together but we don't ever have to listen to that one ever <laughs> so <laughs> You can be curious now, dude. I want to listen to it. It's. I mean, it's. It was the first batch of songs that I ever wrote. And yeah. They're fine. Yeah, I, like I like them, but they're they're like my early shit that isn't like well polished. You know what I mean? I get so, it. Dude, I. Um, yeah. Going back and listening to like old band songs, and I'm just like, wow, this is what I thought at the time was awesome. But like yeah. going back to, it, I would do this differently. I do that differently. This should sound a certain way. This. But I mean, that's part of, I don't know, growing up. It's part of growing as an artist, Maturing. part of growing up. Like, it's, <laughs> I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel that. Like, and that's that's one of the things that's been great about like this. Every release I, I put out, like I feel like I hone my like what I want to do with my music. You know, I, I see the things that I did right in a previous release, and I try to expand on those and cut the things that i feel like i could have done better with you know yeah. so like every single release i'm putting out like i feel like i'm honing in on like what i want to do and this this next release i feel like is the is the closest that i've been to like how i i really at least with a, like a full production sound um like how how i feel like my band would would want to sound like in general so it's nice the the lp will come out when it comes out i mean i've got songs for it um already but it's also the fact that like i've never written a longer project like i always kind of like write five songs and then i kind of just am like i want to focus on these five and i've never like tried to work on more than just like that amount you know yeah i get it so it's it's kind of daunting which is why i keep like distracting myself with these smaller projects where i'm like oh god i want to put out like a eight to ten song album and i've got all these ideas that i'm working with and i'm trying to write it and then i think oh well i can just forget about that for now and focus on a five song ep <laughs> so like <laughs> i just i just put out maybe i'll just be an ep man like i'll never put out an lp <laughs> dude i don't know as long as it, it plays into how um one it's obviously that's how you go about your writing right if you get to a certain yeah. point and maybe it becomes daunting or something like that or i mean people's attention spans too nowadays it's hard to write an album and uh, or to to write an album for others i should say um and try and capture that attention span uh, mm -hmm. I, i've always been an album person i've always listened to an album front to back and like that's, that's, that's how i am yeah yeah so that like that's that's what I prefer, but I mean I know people who do singles and they only want singles and they'll focus all their time on that one or maybe two songs at a time and like, yeah, it works for them. That's cool. I see. I can't. I can't do singles. Like this is the first time I've ever released a single, and that's because like the way that I write my songs, and it's probably because of like my theater background and my like literature background, because I I like I like to read and I like. I like stories, you know, whether or not that's like a full concept, uh, like with albums, like whether it's a full concept of yeah. telling a story or just like telling a theme. That's why, like, I have themes to all of my stuff is that, like, I feel like releasing a single part of it is almost a disservice to the full release because it's like not the entire thing and you're not, I don't know. So it was a weird experience to like put out one of the songs, especially a song that is like right in the middle of like my my theme so it's like okay what is what is going on here like there's um and like i said with this new release it's like I, i'm testing the waters and like telling a story you know it's very loose and i don't know if you've noticed with some of the demos that i've sent you but like 
front to back, like my envision of the EP is that it, it tells a story. Like there is a there is a narrative that happens, and it just so happens to follow my the theme that I'm going for. Um, so it's like very interesting to like put out a single song in the middle of the story that like has no context, but I think it works. And honestly, like if the song, if the songs work on their, like they should be able to work on their own. That's, I think that's a, in an a ideal good telling. World. In an ideal world, I think the best kinds of concept albums are the ones that tell like a really great story, but like the songs on their own hold up, you Absolutely. know, like in my opinion, one of my favorite albums is, um, Tallahassee by the mountain goat, uh, uh, Coheed and Cambria's um, Ascension, Afterman. I was waiting for the Coheed drop. Dissension, di- like, the it's, uh, co- uh, the Coheed uh, um, Afterman, like, especially, like, that album is, or the double album, is, like, one of the best pieces of music that I've ever heard, in my opinion. Not only because, like, are the songs just absolute fucking bangers, but, like, the story it tells through the entire double LP is so carefully crafted and has so much like detail in it it's insane to me and it's, that's the kind of shit that like i wish that i could do and in no way like yeah. ever going to try to emulate but like i like to play around with stuff you know i like to test the waters to see what works and what doesn't work so with this release i'm trying to you know to tell a story and i'm trying the big things for this release are i, I want to test telling a narrative um even if it's kind of a loose narrative. And I also want to test um, production and trying to, because I feel like I'm always very like, not lo-fi, but like just not very like crisp as far as production goes, you know? It's very much always been kind of just like my acoustic guitar and just random shit I threw in yeah. there. And I, I've been testing like, and that's that's the great part about having someone like you that knows about that shit and can help me like, it's been a great feeling to be able to like, like give you a wall of text and be like, okay, so this is kind of what I'm going for <laughs> with this song. Like, I don't know if any of this makes sense, but like, this is the vibe I'm going for. Do we have and very want... like minds when it comes to that shit? So I'll read your paragraph and you're kind of like redundant in certain spots. And I'm just like, okay, so he definitely wants to accentuate that. And like, I, I, I just know what you're thinking and I feel good about that. I love it. Like, honestly, the first time you sent me the, like the first mix, you sent of bbr um the new single like and i know we like changed it a bit like we tweaked it a little bit afterwards Mm -hmm. but like it it blew me the fuck away because like legitimately that was like exactly what i was wanting to go for and the fact that you made it happen compared to like me trying to produce it myself like the difference was so especially since you use like a lot of the same things that i use for things that i like produce on my own so like the fact that you're able to like do that just made me so like it blew me away i was like holy shit like i <laughs> dude that makes me so happy <laughs> no yeah dude it was that was like one of the big moments for me where i realized like don't try to do this yourself dude like let other people help you because they know what they're doing and like that's what this is all of like music is collaborative like there's no reason why like if you want to do it yourself and you can do it yourself and you're able to do it yourself like more power to you but like don't feel like you have to constrain yourself in any way musically and if if that's something that like helps you get to where you want to be and for me like it is um like go for it man like and i did and i fucking love it like every single song like the ones that haven't been released yet that people haven't heard like it's just i'm so excited like i legitimately (laughs) am so excited about them because they're like they're such a vibe and they're exactly like what i want and i don't know if like i don't know like they're they're songs that i like a lot and at the end of the day like if i enjoy them then that's all that matters to me you know so i feel comfortable putting them out to the world like um, because it's, it's exactly what I want, you know? Cool. So that's my, um, that, that's my segment that you sent me about, uh, hyping somebody up right now. I'm gonna hype you up because you, you fucking me? rock, dude. You're so helpful. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate it, it. No, yeah, no, I, it's, it's great. I love it. I love the community. I love meeting such awesome people that have helped me along the way. So I think that's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, dude. To your point, um, I think music as a whole is supposed to be collaborative. Um, um, and, uh, you being able to trust other people with that, uh, with your baby, like that's, it's, it's, it's a huge step in personal growth. Right. But it's also yeah. like, 
that's also what music is meant to be. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm excited. I love working on it. Um, I'm excited to hear the two that I have not heard. And um, I just love, I don't know. It's super cool. Um, it, people need to collaborate more. Do more things with other people. Share your stuff. Share other people's stuff. And just, I don't yeah, know. I share. love it when people share things with me. Even if it's not like to to like ask my for my help. I just love people trusting me with like their demos or something. Yeah. I'll get like a random message. They're like, yo, dude, can I send you these demos? I'm like, uh, fuck yes, you can send me <laughs> demos. Like, like I, I, I got, um, I hope he doesn't hate me for saying this. I got Big Al's LP, the Oh Look, Someone's Ooh. Got Opinions Tonight. I got it like a while before it released. Oh, I thought you were going to say um, new stuff. No, no, no. I mean, I've heard some new stuff, but like, I, I should stop talking about that. Um, but the, <laughs> oh, look, someone's got opinions tonight. Like, I got that a couple, like, a while before it released. And some of the songs weren't even, like, done. You know, like, it was very obvious that he had, like, a lot to work on still. But, like, I legitimately like downloaded that shit and listened to it all the time because i just love getting new music especially music that nobody else has and i love supporting the homies and like the my best like the best feeling for me is when somebody sends me like their album or their their demos and like for me to tell them like these are my favorite songs like this is what i really loved from this song not to say like the other stuff isn't good but i think it's always really nice to hear like oh this person really appreciated this one particular part of my music and Absolutely. like i love doing that so it was it was great for me to send like all that shit to, to chris and be like yo dude like this one song banger other song banger i was crying <laughs> like it was great like <laughs> i love it man it's the best <laughs> i agree um cool well uh cool. let's move on <laughs> ultimately yeah cool cool um <laughs> Uh, let's move on to our next little thing. Um, this is called advice and questions. Um, I uh -oh. tweeted out earlier and Instagrammed earlier. Um, just people, uh, if you have any questions or you need some advice on something, uh, shoot me an email or shoot me a DM and uh, we'll go over um, your question and hopefully give you some decent advice uh, with whoever I'm talking to. So um, I do have a couple if you're ready to give some people oh, advice. Oh, I'm terrible at advice, but I'm ready. I'm so ready. I'm the kind of person that's like, uh, like, is just, I listen and I go, you know, that is something, that is something going on. And I have nothing to say that will be helpful because, <laughs> but like, I'm here to listen to you and I'm here to be the person you can talk to me about it. So if anything, whoever's listening and getting the advice, I hope you know that I'm here, I'm listening and I care. So. All right. all right, so first one, this is all completely anonymous, by the way. Uh, unless you want okay. your name attached to it, I will completely leave your name out of it. And uh, whether it's serious okay. or not, we will uh, go about it. But first question I have, um, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. How do I get over uh, the fear of failure? Oh, that one's a hard one, man. <laughs> We're starting um, off really fucking difficult. That's a hard one. Uh, like... Uh, <laughs> Like, if I can be honest, like, I, I I constantly have that feeling. Like, the fear of failure is something that, like, is always looming. And it's not just with music. Like, it's with everything, I you know? I think it's an innate human trait to have that fear of not living up to whether it's your expectations, somebody else's expectations, or whatever that failure is in your mind. Um, everybody has that. So, um I don't know if there's one fell swoop way to say uh, no. convince yourself that you're a fucking boss ass bitch and just <laughs> boss -ass. do it. I mean, um, I'll definitely say like it's completely normal to feel that. Like you said, like it, I, I think having that fear, another thing that can come with that is that like it, like you you feel that and you're like oh shit, like I'm feeling so like anxious about this and, and whatnot and like just being able to say like this is normal this is a normal thing for me to feel right now and honestly like if you feel that way it's it's not necessarily a good thing but it, it definitely means like you care about what you're doing you know i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing though either right because fear is a huge motivator um mm -hmm. and if god it might be the biggest motivator in humans um i would say obviously if it cripples you to the point where you can't do things 
um, just daily tasks like shit. Yeah. I don't know, taking a shower and brushing your teeth and shit. Like, then it's it's probably time to to seek some professional help and talk to somebody and delve out your issues. But um, and, I, and I will say, like, that goes into kind of what we've been talking about about like making music specifically uh, collaborative. Like knowing that like you don't have to do it alone. Like oh no, you, you got like at least with music i I can i can say firsthand because i will be that person like you got people that are like supportive and even if like you do in your own mind like fail or you think you failed like you got people there that are like right there with you like building you up making you feel good like that i mean that's what i try to do at least for other people so like i never think any of my homies are failures like if if they do something or like i don't know like i'm always there just being like dude you're doing a fucking great job you're putting yourself out there like failure like the fear of failure is obviously something that people are going to feel but like just know that you're, you're not alone and you don't have to face it by yourself so 100% that's, that's my two cents i think my that's two cents. that's the perfect way to state that um you yeah it just don't you're not alone in that feeling um write that song go for that promotion uh, shit, I, I go and do something, go skydive, I don't know, just do, don't, don't live. Go to St. Augustine. <laughs> go to St. Augustine and go see a bunch of haunted shit and don't pay attention on the, the guided tour. And <laughs> you don't gotta call me out like that, man. <laughs> yeah, um, alright, next question, um, uh, kind of plays into the same thing. How do I stop caring about uh, what others think of me? Um, I think that a lot of people don't give themselves enough credit. And I mean, I, I'm the pot calling the kettle black. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't give them, themselves enough credit for... Fuck, just living. Um, surviving the last yeah. year and a half has not been an easy year and no. life outside of COVID life is not an easy task. Um, and shit. I, come, yeah. I, give yourself more I, credit. Pat yourself. I think, on the a, I think a, a good thing that at least has helped me personally, um, is surrounding myself with people that a, a are component. supportive, like I said, and then B are, uh, are kind I, I wouldn't say necessarily similar but like make me feel comfortable in who i am like that was a big thing for me when i was feeling like i was a fucking weird depressed kid that like nobody else was like i mean i went to a i went to a christian high school when i was growing up and like i was the i was the black sheep you know like i was not like everybody else and it wasn't until like i found the theater community i found the emo community that i felt like I could be myself and not give a shit what other people think because I was surrounded by these people that like loved me for who I was and not for like the group that I was a part of or who I was supposed to be, you know? So 100%. I think, you know, surrounding yourself with people that are supportive is, is a, is a, is a huge thing. Um, and, and, and can be really helpful. You know, for saying that you don't have very good advice, you have very good advice. I, <laughs> I appreciate that. I don't feel like I have good advice because most of my advice is just like, well, I don't know. This is what works for me. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, how do I stop comparing myself to others on social media? Oh, that's so hard, man. You know, you know everything. <laughs> I will I will be the first one to admit like every single fucking musician. I mean, it doesn't have to be just musicians. It's like looking at their 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 friends or the other bands that they look up to or the other people that they look up to and they're seeing what they're doing and they're like, shit, like these people are, are so much cooler than me. These people are so much more successful than me. Yeah. It's so draining. And it's, honestly, like, oh, sorry. No, you, I, I'm just going to play into that. It, it's hard to not let those things get to you when i i really believe that we're not supposed to be as connected to everybody on earth as we're supposed to be connected um the and... best thing that i did oh sorry no yo go for it um like one thing that really helped me uh, this is gonna sound so fucking lame um but like i when i moved to florida like i basically 
um, cut most of my social media out of my life. Like big one was Facebook for me. Like I don't use Facebook anymore. And Same. honestly, it was the. And I know that's like such a dated thing for me. It's like okay, boomer. Like you use Facebook. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> like Facebook for me was huge. Um, and uh, being connected to like my friends, especially actors that are saying like, oh, I'm doing this show with this famous actor I got this part or this gig and I'm just like oh god they're like so much more successful than me um I cut it out I was like you know what I'm working on me I'm doing my thing and I want to be proud of myself and I don't want to give a fuck about what other and it's easier said than done you know just to say like I don't give a fuck about what other people think but you know like you said being connected the way that we are it's so difficult and I think finding ways to be able to kind of like lessen the load is helpful you know I will say it is okay, and I personally encourage taking breaks. Um, Yeah. You need a break from that. It's too much. It's too much. It's, um, you, yeah, you need I take breaks from Twitter all the time. I feel that. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you just got to get off, and you're like, I can't deal with this right now. Yeah. um, But as far as... And when you are on there, it is absolutely hard not to compare yourself to others. That said, be happy for those that are doing what they're doing, um, and encourage no, yeah. encourage your friends to. Uh, I mean, shit. I have a couple of friends in. Uh, I don't know some tropical island somewhere and they're posting a bunch of pictures i'm like fuck man like i'm super jealous of that but like yeah i'm so pumped for them because they're having a blast um and like that's sick but like you can't take i don't know you can't i don't know no i feel you i think for me like one is learning to be like to be supportive of other people in the way that you would want them to support you you know like seeing the friends that you have doing the cool things that they're doing, like being supportive because you know that you would want them to be happy for you for what you do. And you wouldn't want them to be, I don't know, pissy about it, I guess. And then for me personally, like a big thing as far as comparing myself to others, isn't necessarily seeing that other people are doing great things, but it's more of like that. I'm not doing great things. You know, it's okay that they're succeeding, but I'm not succeeding. And that's what hurts me. And I guess what I do is like, I look at myself, with the goals that I have and I I don't have like extravagant goals in my life, but I I always look at myself where I want to be. It's hard to like where I want to be and then where (laughs) I, where, where I used to be and then where I am right now. And I try to like do little check-ins every now and then where I go, okay, well I was here and now I'm here and it doesn't seem like a big step, but I am still growing. Like, like I said, with, with the album releases that I put out, like I'm not necessarily like, making the best music in the world but like i was here and like i've slowly started to get better and i can see that change and i think like being able to take a step back and say like okay i am doing great things because i am improving myself i'm getting better and i'm working towards the goal that i want to be whether that be you know being a famous musician or like an actor or just like releasing an lp like just just say like it's stepping stones like look at the stepping stones that you take and like yeah you've come a long way from where you started to add to that focus on being present and try to be as present as possible don't yeah. let your past get to you and don't allow something that happened in the past to affect why you aren't somewhere now um, and don't obviously let your future affect you um because you're not there currently um mm-hmm. be as present as you can and do the best that you can to focus on yourself and whether your your aspirations are to drive a freaking Lamborghini like some dude who's in uh, I, I don't know on a racetrack somewhere or you see freaking uh, Travis Barker ripping dun- drums down and he's been doing it for fucking 30 years now or whatever he like, started somewhere, you know? He had Everybody other starts friends. somewhere. They do. Like, you look at fucking, like, the first Green Day shows where they're, like, playing their high school. Oh, and, my like, God, yeah. That? Have you seen that? That Where they're, like, playing their high school and they're playing stuff from, like, I can't remember what album, but, like, they're playing What's the music dookie, that right? would, would make them blow up and everybody's yeah. just passing, passing by, like, yeah, nobody's paying attention yeah. to them. 
like yeah. it, they they started somewhere and now they're i mean now that we don't want to talk about where they are now but like they became <laughs> we don't have to talk about the last album that came out but um but like still they 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 did great things and i i think i'm sure they felt the same way um at, oh, at some point so yeah. I, I think it's no, actually they did because I remember like in an interview, Billy Joe Armstrong was like talking about when they finished recording American Idiot. He was like super emotional about it because he was like, this is like something that I'm really I've put so much time and effort in. And if it doesn't like pan out, like, what am I going to do? Like, this album is like everything to me. And, and it just happened to be the album that fucking put them on the goddamn map of rock and roll. <laughs> like. As much as I agree with that, are you really going to say that American Idiot put Green Day on the map, Brayden? I I think uh, listen, okay, listen. <laughs> I think American I think American Idiot was the 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 album for them that solidified them as like a, the staple of of punk music or like pop punk music. Like I'm not saying their previous stuff wasn't good and that people <laughs> didn't enjoy it and that it put them I get like, what you're saying. I'm just fucking with you, but it's so I'm like also American older Idiot than was the one too, that was just so. like boom. You know what I mean? So I don't know. But anyways, what what I'm trying to say is <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing whoever's listening, you're doing good, you're doing great, I'm proud of you. Keep doing the things you're doing and, yes. and if other people are doing things, that's okay too, because you're doing what you're doing and that's all that matters. <laughs> so, Amen. That's Papa Papa Judas talking to you from the heart right there. <laughs> We're never you we're never saying that ever again. We don't need to ever call. <laughs> That's only how I'm referring to you from now on. So tough oh, nookies, shit. dude. Oh shit. Um, uh, last question. Thankfully, it's a lighter one. Uh, <laughs> how many strings is too many on a guitar? Ooh, oh, that's that's a toughie. Um, I mean, I I'm very much in the boat of like you know if if it works for you, we'll go for it. Like if you need a fucking a million string guitar like i don't know why you would need that okay <laughs> go for it for saint judas how many strings is too many strings on saint judas's guitar probably seven because i wouldn't know what to do with the seventh one okay <laughs> oh i i i'm good with my six string and i don't maybe if i ever decided i needed to do more like I would add them, but like I don't really make music that would require that, so I'm good That's with six. Too. Like I don't, nothing, nothing wrong with having a seven string, doing a having a good old baritone guitar, or like um, doing an eight string. Twelve strings are super pretty. It's technically not like I mean, you know, they're, they're octaves, saying, yeah. so it's not like. But you know, play play with play with what works for you, and if it doesn't work for me, it doesn't mean that that's like the only way. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to each their own. Um, to each their own. Personally, for me, eight is too many. Um, eight, okay. As there's an that. eight string somewhere back there. Um, oh, se- yeah. Seven is, uh, seven is the hornbill standard. Um, really? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. yeah, everything hornbill has been seven string, and I've gotten very used to playing seven string. Um Playing in Derek, I play a six string, and then there are some spots on the new album that has that eight string behind me, uh, but it's literally for freaking chuggies and like, Hell unless yeah. uh, unless you're Tosin Abasi or Javier doing freaking tappy little things and you're all kinds of crazy yeah. on your eights and nine strings or Josh Travis playing nine or ten strings or whatever, I don't know. Teach your own, dude. Just do your own thing as long as it sounds yeah. really cool and you're not brown note and everybody making them shit them pants i i, think <laughs> I mean if you have that power like <laughs> yeah, wield it why not flex it you know like... <laughs> <laughs> all right so that is advice and questions um Sweet. thank you for everybody that wrote in i hope uh i hope that we gave you some somewhat <laughs> concise advice <laughs> and helpful <laughs> yeah. advice um but uh yeah uh, uh so now for segments um so for everybody that comes on the podcast we're gonna run through segments and uh everybody has uh the same ones and uh here we go first segment this fucking rules 
Uh, tell me about something that fucking ruled this week, Braden. Um, I went to St. Augustine. <laughs> you went to St. Augustine, that's right. Are we talking about music that rules? Or are we talking anything. About general anything things? that's in your life that is currently making you be like, damn, that fucking rules. Um, I, I had fun in St. Augustine. That was a good time. That that's rules. a good answer. All of it rules. Um, Music-wise, uh, Palette Knife. A new Palette Knife LP has like been on my repeat, so if you're not listening to Palette Knife, like... Fucking go listen palette to palette stashes. Go listen palette to them. Palette stashes. They're yeah. the best. So that's what rules. That's what rules. Uh, this fucking rules this week for me. Uh, my dogs. Uh, my, <laughs> I mean, my homies do, but my dogs. My actual puppy dogs. Um, they <laughs> fucking <homies>. rule. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Puppies are the best. I love it. Yes. Uh, in the future podcast, they, I mean, even on this podcast, I don't know, my wife and dogs might be coming through the door and uh there might be guest appearances so um, i'm down i'm ready uh next this fucking sucks brayden what fucking sucked for you this week oh my god the apartment situation dude <laughs> <laughs> i guess i can get into it a little bit uh so Do i told it. you i moved into my 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 studio apartment which has mm -hmm. been such a great thing for me um except it wasn't because it turns out the place is infected with cockroaches so no yeah yeah they did a really good job of uh making sure i didn't see it when i was checking out the, the out the unit so um i moved in and after a couple of days i realized well this is a way to live so i'm currently not at the uh, at the apartment because it is getting treated, so. Okay. At least yeah, so hopefully it goes away. Hopefully it goes away. But Hope so. I think it's the building, and it's been really ass, and the landlord doesn't give a shit, so. Shit, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah. Fuck so landlord, that fucking by sucks. the way. Fuck landlord. Fuck the establishment or whatever. <laughs> Honestly, yes. <laughs> um. Next. No, you gotta, you gotta go. No, you have to. Oh yeah, sorry. For you, this Don't. fucking sucks. Um, it has been like a hundred degrees every fucking day in Salt Lake, and my car's oh, AC good. needs a recharge. So I went to buy a thing that recharges my AC, and I require whatever new refrigerant is on the market, and I can't buy it over the fucking counter like a, a a normal person who charges their air conditioning in their car. I have to go to the fucking dealer. And get overcharged for that shit. So that fucking sucks. That does fucking suck, dude. I hate that. It's hot in, in Florida, obviously. It's also humid in Florida, so, like, I couldn't imagine not having my AC I'm, down here. I'm thankful that I don't have to deal with the humidity. I grew up with it, and uh, I, I, I am grateful for that. But, uh, yeah, 105 it. degrees can go fuck itself, especially when <laughs> you're driving around. So, um, fuck you, heat. <laughs> yeah, global warming. Uh you're a dick. Um, all right, next. Recent jams. Uh, aside from Palette Stashes, what have you been listening to? Palette Stashes! Um, I still on my my rotation is the new Riley LP that dropped this year, Already Fucked. Riley's like, it was one of those bands that I discovered on Bandcamp, just like perusing the emo okay. uh, subsection. And they fucking rule dude i don't know if you've listened to riley but like they I have not you album. gotta send me a link i'll send it to you they put out this it's it's been it's been back and forth between the palette knife and riley lp okay. being my favorite lp this year um also to kind of get into my more folksy side uh the new lucy dacus album dropped not too long ago and okay. i'm fucking in love with it and that is the least like punk rock thing that i could no fuck it like lucy dacus is punk rock i don't give a shit like lucy dacus rules punk rock is um, a mindset dude it is not she, a genre she slays i love her music and it's so good it's like the perfect music for listening to like driving at night or like wanting to just feel like nice and like her voice is just so goddamn good and her lyrics are so it's great it's awesome highly recommend it um so, please yeah, send me links to, to both of them I will, 100%. Okay. 100%. Uh, what about you? I gotta hear it. On the complete other side of the spectrum, I have been listening to a lot of Frontier. Um, okay. Have you ever listened to them? I have not. Okay. Think of, like, Dillinger Escape Plan. 
uh, mixed with. Uh, have you ever listened to Car Bomb? No. It, okay, no, just imagine the craziest noises coming out of guitars and uh, the mathiest and heaviest shit there is. Like to to. Uh, contortionist kind of crazy. Heavier, sound. crazier. What? Glass Cloud? It's glass Cloud ish. Think of, like, the craziest parts of Glass Cloud, and then that's, like, Fred Geary. I saw Glass Cloud open for the contortionist, and it was crazy, so that's what I'm picturing right now. So, like, fucking, Picture, think of if Anxiety was a a, a, a band, and, like, (laughs) that's what it is. All right, I can I'll do that. Sa- I mean, you, you send me links to those two, and I'll send you a link to that. And I'm curious. All right. Because <laughs> it's I'm, literally I'll, the other side of the spectrum. I'll listen to it. Oh, hell yeah. All right, uh, next. Uh, I'm going to sing this every time like freaking Beyonce, but I woke up with this. So I woke up with this in my head. What did you wake up with your uh, – any song that you woke up with in your head that probably shouldn't have been in your head? <laughs> Oh, probably shouldn't have been in my head. Well, maybe not uh, shouldn't have been, but, like, you have no reasonable explanation for why it's there. Um, well, reasonable explanation. I I don't know. I don't... I haven't had a song stuck in my head recently that I don't have a reason to, like... All right. Well, then, fuck that. What have you woke up with in your head? Um, I, I've had one of the Gami Gang songs stuck in my head, Those like, all day. So uh, I can't remember which one. Uh, it's, it's the one that's like, you're crazy and everyone knows it or, oh, it's to- I, it's been stuck in my head and I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> like, I can't, oh shit, I feel so bad now. Um, feel I've bad. had a Gami Gang song stuck in my head, now it's gone apparently. Um, so that's what I've had stuck in my head and, <laughs> or it did. Those guys are so good. I freaking love They're them. They're so great. Um... Oh, it's so great. Yeah. It's a great al- album. So I woke up with this in my head the other day, but uh, the uh, male song from Blue's Clues. I don't the know. old one or the new one? I, oh, I don't know. Uh, here's the mail that never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When one. it comes, I yeah. want to wag mail. The I don't new, know the... why that's in my head, but uh, I can't tell, even tell you the last time I saw Steve or Blue. And... <laughs> well, you know they rebooted it, right? Like they're doing new episodes with a new guy. I know guy. that there's a magenta dog, and that's about all I know. <laughs> well, they up they updated it, and the mail song has been replaced because people don't do mail anymore. So it's like this really shitty song about emails. It's like email, email. Like it's so bad. All right. But it's it's that that's why I was like oh shit has he had the email song stuck in his head? <laughs> no, <laughs> I kind of want to listen to it though now because I want my childhood <laughs> ruined. So it's a it's a banger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, uh, Shinfo. Uh, if anybody does not know that term, Shinfo stands for shitty info, and it's kind of just random facts that don't mean anything to anybody but it means it might not even mean something to you just give me some shinfo what's on your head um fun useless facts the the one that i always use when people ask me this question is that um ohio is the only state f out of the 50 united states that does not contain a letter that is present in the word mackerel what? You're like what? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know the word mackerel. Yeah. Like the, the, the fish, the word mackerel has letters in it. M a c k e r a l. And I Ohio think. is the um, only state with letters oh, in it that does not occur no, in mackerel. Yeah, there. Every state has a that letter is in the shinful. word mackerel. But Ohio's the only one that doesn't have it. <laughs> Everybody that's else do. that's coming on this podcast, you now have to set <laughs> – that is par for Shinfo. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> that's like the most useless fact ever. <laughs> um, yeah, my Shinfo uh, pales in comparison. Um, no, please. I me. have uh, an absolute affinity for drinking things uh, that are carbonated, and I've been okay. drinking a lot of Zevia or Zevia. Um, yeah, okay. Hell and yeah. And it's, it's like vegan soda, and it's really fucking good, and that's my Shinfo. <laughs> nice. Hey, I mean, 
that's fun. That's a fun Shinto. I like it. I respect it. It falls under the category, right? It does nothing for anybody. Yeah. Unless CVU wants to sponsor us or something. Let's go. <laughs> Please, sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, give someone credit. You already alluded to it. You, hell yeah. You're, produce, you're helping me produce this new EP. You fucking rock, dude. Everything that I said, like, these songs would not be as good as they are production-wise, at least, I guess. Um, without you so like i can't even like begin to to thank you for that so hyping that shit up hype my boy let's give a round of applause warm bill killing it on the production side for saint judas love it first off thank you um second i'm trying very hard um just personally to accept compliments um and as tough as that is to hear (laughs) for whatever reason in my fucked up brain uh, I, I really appreciate it. I'm thrilled to be yeah. working with you. and uh, It's been fun. It's been so wonderful. It's been very wonderful. It's been great. I I couldn't have asked for a better person to work with with this. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm giving uh, Ryan credit. Ryan is the other half of Hornbill. Uh, he'll be co-hosting with me every now and then when he's available, but... Um, I wanted to give him credit because he moved here in April, um, so he's been here for, what, April, May, June, uh, for, like, two and a half months, and he's just fucking killing it. Like, he's thriving out here, and, uh, I love him, and he's the best, so. Hell yeah, uh, dude. Yeah, giving him credit. That's awesome. Way to go. Yeah, 100%. All right, so next one is the Let's Listen Party, and this may be a little bit fucked up until I can figure out how to do this properly, but I'm going to play this through uh, the... I'm going to play it so I can hear it, but Braden's not going to be able to hear it right now, Um, so you're just going to have to deal with my reaction until uh, I can figure out a way to do it. So um, this is who? Davey Dynamite, and the song is called Holy Shit. Is that right? Yep, that's it. Let's go. So, okay, that's already an interesting intro. I like that. I love this. I love this so much. I dig this. It's so good, dude. <laughs> so good. I saw gods and I saw shit. He has a nice voice. Interesting voice, uh, but nice voice. It's a it, great voice, Davies. Yeah. Just wait till it goes hard, man. You're gonna love it. Got my hair cut. It's the shortest that it's been melting snow Is this a band, Davy Dynamite, or is this like a solo act? Um, I think Davy Dynamite has a band, and this is like his solo project. Okay. Maybe I might be wrong there. I know he's uh, Davy's like involved in a lot of uh, different projects. So, okay. is all of his stuff similar to this? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's very punk, like pop punk, very punk kind of stuff. Um, Davy does a lot of uh, that. All just came in for your reference. Holy shit. 
Dude, that's a cool way to go back into that, like, consistent riff. Right? Yeah, dude, I, I like that a lot. So I'm gonna have to listen to more of that. That's cool. Davey, that was, Davey was someone I met, um, in Memphis at the first house show I ever played. Okay. Um, the Pagan Mom House, and Davey was so supportive of me, specifically. I don't know if, like, they remember at all, but, like... Davy just I, I was kind of nervous about it because I'd never played like a house show before and they're like super into my set and they come on and play that shit I was just like holy fuck this, this is so good and I that's, I listen, really that's cool. on my rotation like all the time the entire album is super good very like politically charged very punk rock like it's just some good ass punk rock music so Sick. like highly recommend Davy to anybody I like that I'm just realizing that uh, I hope uh, nobody tries to freaking sue me for copyright bullshit while I go through this uh, little segment in the future, but um, I hope I'm going to... Davey's gonna, coming after you. <laughs> I'm going to do it until somebody says something, so um, I like that a lot. Thank you for showing me that. Um, yeah. yeah, that's I feel Davey cool. needs more love. I, Davey, like, criminally underrated. Um, definitely needs more love, so I love sharing it. Cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm going to have to listen to that. Uh, cool. Uh, obviously, I don't have anything for you because that's a uh, guest-provided segment. So um, Me, I'm the guest. I did yeah. that. <laughs> uh, and the last thing I have is plugs. What are you plugging, dude? If you have any plugs, you don't have to have plugs. I don't care. My plug, my uh, my like my my drug plug, or like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, go for no, it. No, <laughs> no uh, I just plug the homies, man. Like all of the homies. I wish I could like list them all off. And Try. I always, for okay. So I got big aluminum, absolute banger. Joe Hallen, absolute banger. In dot from how I became invisible, absolute banger. Blue vines, absolute banger. Hornbill, banger. Derek Christensen, banger, Pilot Stash, banger, Riley, banger. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck. I'm... Somebody's like, why are you saying my name right now? Where's my <laughs> name right now? Um, shit, uh, Toehead, Toehead's great. Daniel Shea, I recently got, in, I recently met and got into Daniel Shea. Super great, like, acoustic pop punk music. Um, those are 10 bands that I am, like, super into right now that are all homies and wonderful people, and I probably missed um, and I'm so sorry for not saying you. It's it's like being asked that question. It's uh, like yeah. your, your if mind. You're, if you're out. excluded, please know to not take that personally. Um, that's just like name ten fruits off the top of your head, and freaking you're gonna uh, Ramby tans are gonna be pissed off that you didn't say their name. So. Uh, <laughs> <Where's> but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the homies are. Uh, the, the best um i do uh, i will say i have a i update my um homie playlist on my spotify fairly frequently so if anybody is interested in like listening to some of the bands that i'm involved with a lot or like that i'm super into or like i'm very supportive for that just don't really have as many as much of a following as like some of the other bands in the scene i highly recommend I, and i'm not like trying to plug my own playlist right now but like like, it, it's just, I, I update that a lot with, like, the people that I, like, meet and learn. So, uh, if you go to my Spotify, like, I have a playlist at the bottom that's called The Homie Takeover. And it's just all of the people that, like, I love so very much. Oh, and yeah. they're all it's on there. One. So, yeah. So, it's, it's fun. I like updating it whenever The Homies release new music. So, it's very fun. Yeah. I'm going to so. add to that a little bit. Um, thank you to everyone. Uh, I'm going to say this on behalf of you, too. Um, that has been included in or just been included uh, gracious and just super fucking cool in this weird little sub segment of Twitter that we have um, and everybody's just it's a it's a circle jerk of patting each other on the back and like it's just the best hype the most support that like it's just it's so supportive and it's so fucking down to earth and real like Mm -hmm. If you're not a part of it, come be a part of it because it's inclusive. Yeah. And as long as you're, as long as you're fucking cool, which I'm, if you're listening to this, you're cool. Um, 
get over here and be a part of it and we're gonna love you the same that we love everybody else so um yeah True. come join us yep. please 100 percent. but uh yeah so that segment um that's really it honestly um uh, this is an hour and a half and that pumps me up because i thought we were gonna get like 20 minutes and <laughs> no. if there's anything you want to know about me is i like to rant um same so i'll rant as much as i like i love especially if it's about the homies like i love talking about the homies and shit that like is going on in the scene so like i'll talk forever about that <laughs> perfect um but yeah i i think that's a good place to wrap it up uh do you right. have anything on the top of your head that you need to say to the world i love you even though i don't show it sometimes i love you <laughs> that's perfect to the world just the world in general not anyone specifically just i love you it's fine be better sometimes though <laughs> be better all the time better all um, the time <laughs> for speaking to the world be better all the time <laughs> this is to the world um all right cool well that wraps up the hornbill podcast um thank you Braden. thank you saint judas um go listen to his music um i'm gonna put this pen right up in the camera and point to you go listen to it um yeah thanks for spending some time with me i appreciate you working through and being my little guinea pig through all this but um yeah it means a lot thank you yeah no problem thank you for having me thanks for nothing Bitch!